In 1919, Winston Churchill is to have said, the war of the giants is over, the struggles of the pygmies have begun. Of course, what he realized that even, in, even the pygmies had to win their wars, otherwise they could lose their independence. One of the largest wars after World War I was the struggle between Poland, newly independent, and the new Bolshevik government in Russia. This war ended successfully with the stopping of the Bolshevik invasion of Poland and the saving of Europe in August of 1920. The Polish Museum is fortunate in that we have many artifacts associated with that struggle. Some of those artifacts were brought back by the veterans who had enlisted in the Polish army in France for World War I in 1917 and 1918 and then traveled to Poland, and others were given to us as bequests or donations. This stained glass window from the Polish pavilion of the 1939 New York World's Fair bears witness to that war in 1920. If we look at the bottom of the stained glass window, we have the initials JP for Józef Piłsudski, his marshal's baton and the cross and the ribbon of the Virtuti Militari, Poland's highest military decoration. There is a laurel wreath surrounding the, this inscription and the laurel wreath is given to the victor. In this case, the Polish army in 1920 over the Bolsheviks outside of Warsaw. Among the artifacts that we have is this saber that was presented to Jan Bartmański, a hero of the Polish effort in before World War I. Bartmański was a soldier of the Austrian army. After his retirement, he came to the United States became, to seek a career as a businessman. And he also was interested in military affairs, so he stayed with the Polish Falcons in North America in their military program and eventually became the head of the military training. So he received this saber from his fellow uh, Falcon leaders. His father had died fighting against the Russians in 1863. His grandfather fighting against the Russians in 1830-31. His great-grandfather had perished in the Kosciuszko uprising uh, prior before the partitions of Poland. So there was a long history associated with the uh, history of Poland. Uh, Bartmański, even though he was 50 years old, attended the second Falcon officers course in Canada. Uh, this was a course geared towards 20 year olds, but he managed to uh, finish the course, became member of the Falcon military commission. When the Falcons started going to France in 1918, he went to France because of his prior military service. He took part in a logistics course, returned with the Polish army to Poland in 1919, and commanded a regiment outside of Warsaw. He was taken prisoner and tortured and killed. One of the signers of the saber is a Vincente Skarzyński. He was a American veteran, a Falcon officer, fought in France, and then he remained in Poland and was captured in 1939 and was executed in Katyn. Many of you are familiar with Marion C. Cooper, an uh, American aviator who was a Polish fighter pilot in the 1920 war, who then returned to the United States and wrote the screenplay and eventually directed the famous movie King Kong. A co-founder of his, of the uh, so-called Kosciuszko Squadron, was from Chicago, Lieutenant Colonel Cedric E. Fauntleroy. Fauntleroy, uh, in 1942, donated many items to the Polish Museum 
At that time, it was called the Archives and Museum of the Polish Roman Catholic Union. Among those things that he donated was this painting, painted by Regina Valant, based on a photograph of Colonel uh, Fauntleroy in his Polish Air Force uniform with all his appropriate decorations. We also uh, received a book written by Miriam C. Cooper about Colonel Fauntleroy and his squadron. What we have is a translation from the English into Polish printed here in Chicago in 1922 by the Fauntleroy and Harrison Publishing Company. One of the items described in the book is a illustration given to Colonel Fauntleroy by the NCOs and mechanics of the squadron. It is addressed to our beloved commander on the occasion of Christmas in Lvov, 1919, and signed by the NCOs and mechanics. Uh, Fauntleroy and uh, Cooper got a bit of a laugh out of this because here we have a portrait of Kosciuszko, the namesake of the squadron, and the artist shows Lvov, a large city with cupolas and towers and the airplanes flying over it. Then we cross the ocean and come to New York, which has the Statue of Liberty, which is obviously a well-known uh, image of New York, but it also shows New York as a little village compared to Lvov. And this entertained the uh, Americans who had visited New York, of course, quite a bit. The custom of bringing back war prizes or souvenirs goes back into ancient times. Uh, we were fortunate that uh, we received a few items as war prizes. Uh, a young Polish officer, Jan Kostrubawa, who came to Chicago as a young man and then graduated from Weber High School, joined the Polish Army. Now, it's interesting because what he did is, even though he had a good Catholic education at Weber High School, he lied about his age. He was 17 years old, but because he was over six feet, they took him and he was sent to the third officer's course in Canada, uh, completed at Camp Borden, and uh, became a, a lieutenant in the Polish army. In 1918, he arrived in France, took over a, a unit, and uh, with that unit, he returned to Poland. Uh, the unit was the third uh, rifle regiment. In Poland, it was renumbered as the 45th Border Regiment, 45. Puk Szczelców Kresowych. And uh, this unit he led and um, earned a Krzysz Walecznych, Cross of Valor, Poland's second highest military uh, award. He was one of the last Americans to be demobilized from the Polish army and returned to the United States in 1921. Uh, he became active in the Polish community, eventually becoming a uh, writer for the uh, Dziennik Chicagowski, which, came, uh, which was printed in the United States in Chicago through at least the 1960s. The banner that uh, Lieutenant Kostrubawa captured is not a military banner, it's a propaganda banner. Uh, when we look at it, we will see that it's written in Cyrillic, and it is addressed to the uh, inhabitants of Lithuania and Belarus, borderlands between Russia and Poland. Uh, on one side, we have the greetings uh, to the, from the Soviet International Congress. On the other side, we have greetings from, uh, for the countries of Belarus and Lithuania and that they are joining the new socialist order. The other capture of war is a Soviet hat called a Budyanyufka, 
named after the Soviet cavalry commander, Simon Budienne. It is modeled on the, uh, so on the Russian medieval helmet in the, uh, in the fact that it has a point and then uh, comes down and uh, like, a ch like chain mail. One of the young heroes of the Warsaw battle, so-called miracle of the Vistula, was a young priest, Father Ignacy Skorupka, who was a chaplain to the 236th Volunteer Regiment. Uh, he was encouraging his regiment and leading a counterattack and was wounded and died. Uh, the papal nuncio to Poland, to newly established Poland, was Achille Rotti, an Italian uh, bishop, who, unlike the other diplomats, stayed in Warsaw when the diplomatic corps was evacuated. And later on, uh, he became Pope Pius XI. The Polish government, in order to honor him, uh, employed a young Polish artist by the name of Jan Henryk de Rosen to paint at the papal residence, summer residence at Castel Gandolfo, a mural depicting the Battle of Warsaw and also uh, Father Skorupka leading the counterattack. Uh, the reason we don't have that uh, mural, however, we do have two murals done by Jan Henrik Rosen, which came to the museum courtesy of the Polish Pavilion at the New York World's Fair, which is what we started talking about. And they are here in the main hall of the museum, named in honor of Sabina Logisch, and they portray Poland past and Poland future. However, what we do have is a illustration done by a poster artist of Polish descent, Władysław Tedor Benda, who designed many posters during World War I for both the American cause and for the Polish army in France. And you will see this as a sketch of Father Skorupka leading the counterattack moment before he was killed. On the 10th anniversary of the victory of the Poles over the Bolsheviks in uh, Warsaw, the miracle of the Vistula, the Polish community here in Chicago celebrated that momentous occasion by organizing a celebration in Humboldt Park. The civil part took place in Humboldt Park, but before that all the Polish parishes celebrated mass and then everybody met, uh, met at Humboldt Park. According to the newspaper reports, there were 70,000 participants. Uh, someone said it reminded them of the large rallies that took place for Poland's independence during World War I. What the uh, Polish Museum received, actually it was the Roman Catholic Union received as first prize for the most informative float of that parade. The second place was earned by the Polish Women's Alliance and the third by the Alliance of uh, Young Poles, Związek Młodzieży Polskiej, which was a paramilitary group prior to World War I. So we have the top prize uh, for that event. Also, we have the yearly, the day uh, of that event, a uh, memorial book which was published and distributed. So we see again the image of Father Skorupka leading uh, the counterattack uh, against the Bolsheviks. And inside we can see uh, participants, people who talked, uh, presented speeches, were active. So it's a one day shot of what the polls here in Chicago did uh, to commemorate what we are now commemorating 100 years after the fact. 
Uh, unfortunately, because of the political situation in 1945, there was no 25th anniversary uh, celebration uh, because, unfortunately, as a result of World War II, the Soviets did occupy Poland, what they had failed to do in 1920. Another uh, souvenir is a book made by the Polish Roman Catholic Union. It has the autographs and signatures of the main participants and speakers. So again, we have a way of checking who was there and what they said. And of course, we can see the logo of the Polish Roman Catholic Union on the uh, cover. So, a hundred years ago after the fact, despite the uh, conditions that we are under, we are still trying to commemorate and remember what our forefathers achieved a hundred years ago and how their memorial was kept alive.